We're discussing the difficulties in relationships. We discussed yesterday about screaming and how screaming can be so difficult. Just got off the phone now with somebody who has such a relationship, which it's destructive, it's cause it's caustic, it's it's so sad when it happens. I want to discuss something else today, which is a little bit even more destructive and even a little bit more disturbing. And again, all of these experiences, it all depends on how we use them. If a person is able to use these experiences to grow and become a better person and to elevate themselves, if they're forced to be in a relationship where there's screaming going on and they're able to deal with it eloquently to know exactly what the Torah obligates us to do under such circumstances. A person can grow to the greatest heights. As we said, 100 transgressions go away every time someone screams at you and you accept it quietly with love. Now I'm going to talk about something even worse, which is when someone curses at you. Unfortunately, in the world today, there are people whose language is not dignified. And when they get upset, they say things that should not be said. The Chazal, our sages in their infinite wisdom, gave us, our sages in, our, in their infinite wisdom, gave us a methodology. They gave us a methodology how to deal with difficult situations. And that's Kolma the Avid Rahman and the When there's something which hits us powerfully and it's so hard, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to recognize and exclaim, Kol Ma David Rahman Tovav. Everything the mercy one does, he does for good. And that helps us because there's a certain level of frustration and difficulty when we encounter a situation which is so hard. And we just can't deal with it. It builds up a frustration. And we we channel that frustration by saying, Kol Ma David Rahman Tovav. Some people who are not aware of this halacha, or maybe they are aware, they just don't have the strength, uh, the kolchus and nefesh, the strength, inner strength, to apply it. Yeah, but more likely they don't know it, they don't understand it. They resort to other things like using un- inappropriate language. And what if you're at the other end of such inappropriate language? I have to tell you that in my childhood I had such a relationship with somebody, and it was terrible. Many, many years I was attacked with the worst, worst language. And it hurt. It went very, very deep. It went very, very deep. And it's really hard. It's really hard. But you know what? Or as hard as it was, it forced me to grow. It forced me to deal with the reality of the pain that it causes. And un- and this is what Hashem wanted. Hashem wanted me to be in that experience because I had no choice. And to use the techniques, use the methodologies of Chazal, in order to recognize that as painful as this inner pain is, it was for a reason and for growth. Now we find in the Torah that Yaakov Avinu, who was Ishtam, who was perfect, yet when when um, Rachel stole the Trophim, said whoever stole those Trophim should not be alive to tell the story. And in fact, she died because of that curse. Yaakov Avinu had no idea that this was going to happen. And in fact, the Mepharshim say later on when Yaakov Avinu, um, when the Shvatim, when, the, um, when Yaakov's children come back with extra money and he returns it as they go back to Mitzrayim to buy more food, Yaakov says, maybe there was a mistake. Maybe it was an oversight. Yaakov you know, learned this lesson to be very, very careful how you speak because every single word we says has incredibly um, great implications. I know once I told my wife she was having trouble falling and I said that if I could, I would take this on myself. Afterwards, I had six major foot injuries in two years. I went to have done Segal and I, and I told him what happened. I said, is it because of what I said? He said, it's definitely what you said. I said, what should I do? He said, get up in public and say, I no longer accept this upon myself. 
but I don't want to go back to my wife. And that's what I did, and Baruch Hashem, it stopped. What we say is incredibly powerful. We have to be very, very careful the words that come out of our mouth, as we see from Yaakov Avinu and many other instances in Tanakh. That's what's called Poseach Piv Lasad, opening up your mouth, Lasad, and, and it's very, very dangerous. We have to be very, very careful if we're not to say anything caustic or destructive and wish bad upon anybody. But certainly, to curse somebody and to use language which is completely inappropriate, this is a, this is a terrible, terrible thing. And it gets into the deepest recesses of someone's neshama and causes them the greatest pain. And I testify on it. But if you were a victim like myself of such a relationship, then I have to tell you, don't despair. Because there's hope. And not only is there hope, but it's a great light. As the Zohar says, Lefi Roba Choshech Rovor, according to the amount of darkness is the amount of light. These, this foul language it comes from the greatest, greatest darkness of impurity. From the worst, worst place of impurity. And it goes into a person and it causes them the greatest damage. But according to the amount of impurity and damage that a person sustains from this, they can also they can also gain from it. They can also gain from it and get an incredibly powerful experience afterwards of growth and elevation and coming to the greatest levels of perfection. Because according to the difficulties we have, according to the darkness, is the light. Um, as the Medra says, Kivan Shanafal Dikamti, since I fell, I'll get up. Right? Right? Since there was darkness, there will be light. And this, as we come close to the Antar of Hanukkah, this is the story of Hanukkah. This is the story of um, 13 individuals who single-handedly saved the Jewish people in the, in, the, in the wake of spiritual destruction. According to the darkness of the light, according to the amount of suffering, is the redemption. If you suffered in your life from such a relationship, don't despair. Take that inner pain that you have and channel it to Hashem. And say, Hashem, I'm in pain. I went through a hard time. But I need you to help me. And that pain is an impetus to come closer and closer to him. And this is what David Amalek says. Right? <speaking in Hebrew> Remove me from the confines of myself to thank your name. Because when a person is in, encased in the traps, in the entrapment of pain, there's only one way out. is to ask for Hashem's help. So Hashem should help each and every one of us, each one of us according to the difficulties we went through in our life, and according to the amount of pain you have, is the level of closeness you get to Hashem. Hashem ki anisani. I thank you, Hashem, because you afflicted me. The more pain a person has, the more piercing, the more powerful their cry is out to Hashem, and the more they have a chance of reaching complete redemption. Hashem should help us to reach this elevated, elevated level being able to, to to translate, to transform our pain into closer to Hashem, and to cry out to Him with all our hearts. And if you were the recipients of cursing, expletives, foul language, abuse, don't feel sorry for yourself. Thank Hashem that you were in the situation, and use it become a better person, a main character.